All right, a vlog. How long has it been since I've done one of these, man? Not a vlog. I feel, I feel like doing a uh, a Q and A today. I know it's been pff, even longer since I did a Q and A. Probably the Scuff House. I think was the last uh, Q and A I did. I don't think I've ever done one with a cat. This is Freddy. He's chilling, purring and shit. I'm probably just gonna be petting him the whole bit. Um. Anyway, like I said, I just I wanted to do a Q and A. I had you guys ask me some things on Twitter using the hashtag Ask Big T, and I'm here to uh, answer them for you today. Maybe we'll get some uh, some clarity on some things you guys have been wondering about. Now look, the battery on my G7X camera, dead, can't find the charger or whatever. Did my shit just fall? Oh my God. If I could just, damn, don't leave. You were about to make the video good as shit. Freddy, come here. So I'm recording this on my iPhone, so I have to read the questions off on uh, my PC here. So that's why I'm doing it in my, in my room. So, question number one is from Carlos. He asked, uh, when are you planning on playing A Way Out? Which is a game that came out just a few days ago. It's like a co-op game. It's like a prison break type thing. I think I might actually play it today. Um, I think I'm gonna play it with Nate Shot. He's going to stream it. I'm gonna record it. So if we do end up doing that today, then check back tomorrow on YouTube. We may have a couple episodes of that coming out. Let me know in the comments what you guys are thinking about the game. Morganite149 said, how difficult was it getting into competitive gaming being from a small town in Arkansas? Go Hawks, hashtag WooPigSuey. It's really, um, it's not that difficult because the internet brings the world to you. You know what I mean? You're able to uh, compete with anybody you want and all the MLG, game battles, tournaments, whatever, UMG. I didn't fart, that was my chair. Um, just had to clarify, because people be talking shit in the comments. Uh, yeah, so it really doesn't have um, a hindrance on you at all. Maybe the internet connection. I used to play on like Ritter dial-up on PlayStation 2. Uh, the cable internet's not too good. So other than that, but then you just host fuck people. So if you got bad internet, just host the game and win online tournaments that way. And then when you get to land, like, you're really gonna see how good you are, but that's what I used to do. A lot of questions about stocks on here. I knew it was coming, too. Um, I'm actually surprised, like, how many people are interested in that sort of thing. Um, but Jumbled uh, Teeters, Jumbled Teeters said, what is your advice for somebody just starting out in stocks? Um, I'd say... Fuck, like it's a it's a long road, man. Like even the best speculators, investors ever, like it takes years. So don't expect success quickly. Um, I wouldn't bet a whole lot of money very quickly. Like make sure you're focusing on risk management. Just focus on keeping your money. One thing I used to do years ago when I'm you know was just starting out is you think a lot about how much money you can make. And you don't think a lot about how much money you can lose. Job number one, priority number one as a trader, is to protect your money. Because if you run out of money, you can't play the game anymore. So it doesn't take a whole lot of successful trading to be able to beat the market, like to return more than 10% on average per year. So take your time, chill out. You know, if you, you know, you're reading like financial commentary or watching CNBC or whatever you do, first of all, don't watch CNBC. Build your own, you know, strategy, like watch stocks trade. Don't let other people tell you what to do. Don't listen to me. You know what I mean? Um, you just gotta take your time, chill out. You have to, it's not a get rich quick thing. It's really not. Like you have to Think about, you know, do I want to do this for the next 30 years? And if so, what's the best way to go about doing that? Um, it's just, it's, it's going to take a whole lot of time, man. Google is your friend. You have more opportunity, not just stocks. But it is 2018. You literally, if you have one of these right here, you have the world at your fingertips. You have so much information. You just have to be good at knowing what and who to listen to and who to ignore. If you can figure that out, the sky is the limit. Like people ask Elon Musk how he got into uh, SpaceX and you know, rocket science. You know what he said? He read a lot of books. So fucking read some stuff. Read some books. Read um, what's a couple of books? Market Wizards. Uh, read both of those books. Read um, Reminiscences of a Stock Operator. Jesse Livermore, one of the greatest speculators of all time. Um, Start with those, start three books. Actually, also check out um, 
this is a good uh, what's it called chat chat with traders chat with traders go to that website um, it's full of like hour-long podcasts with people who trade all different strategies or like real estate investors watch everything there's like a, like I said like 200 300 podcasts each are an hour long that should keep you busy for like the next two years so go watch all of that and read all of that first. Drop Shot said, when am I gonna shave that beard? I don't know, man. I trimmed it not too long ago and I did it myself and I thought I fucked up, but after a couple of days, it started um, it started coming in a little better. And then I started like each morning, like really trying to style it down, putting, uh, you know, beard oil and like cream and shit. And I really feel like it looks better now. I'm probably not gonna let it get way out here unless, you know, it looks good and not frizzly like, fucking pubes on my face, but I think I'm, I think I'm gonna keep it for right now. At least like this. Spencer Jack Carhouse said, do you miss the old days of the Optic House when you were playing COD or do you prefer where you're at now in life? Miss the stream, bro. I mean, I definitely do miss those days. I mean, that was like a, a serious turning point in my life that allowed me to live, you know, the way I, I do now. I'm glad I took the leap of faith and, you know, I'm not, advocating everybody to do this shit, but you know, like dropping out of college and uh, moving across the country, experiencing new ways of life and new cultures. And it, uh, yeah, I, I definitely, I do miss it, man. There was a lot of camaraderie, um, a lot of friendship, but you know, it served its purpose in my life. Life has to continue forward. I don't think I would want to be like living in a team house right now playing COD. Um, so I definitely do miss it when I go back and just like relive it. Sure. It was a great, you know, stepping stone, um, part of my life and I'm, I'm very thankful for it. I'm very happy and yeah, man, I'm just, I'm happy with, uh, with where things are now as well. So do miss it. Wouldn't go back though. Nick Johnson said, what was your biggest motivation and how do you stay motivated? Well, the way I look at it is like, do I have enough money to never work again? No? Okay, better get to work. <laughs> it's really as simple as that. Like if you plan to be alive when you're, you know, 80 years old and not living on a dollar a day, then um, you have to, you, I mean, you gotta work. You gotta work, man. And I really don't, I don't mind it. Working gives you, I mean, regardless of what you're doing, whether it's YouTube or manual labor, whatever it is, um, it gives you a sense of, fulfillment a lot of times if you at least enjoy what you're doing you know what i mean it gives you a sense of purpose a reason to wake up in the morning so i think even if it's not like a money thing even if i did have enough money to retire i don't think i would do it like going to the beach and shit is cool but that'd get old after like two weeks three weeks i'll be like oh, okay i gotta go do some shit or i'm gonna lose my mind um so motivation I don't know if there's like a clear cut motivation. I really always wanted to live in the city and I know I like eating really good food that is not um, cheap. It's not cheap in the city, to live in the city and to, to eat good. Like it's not, uh, it's not something you can do if you don't work hard. So I just, I really like eating food. Um, I'm not sure if I'm like a foodie or if I have like a food addiction. Is there a difference? I don't, I don't know if there's a difference, but I have like a serious psychological connection to food, but it seems to be like a good thing. Like I don't get huge, you know what I mean? I always catch myself when I get up to like 195 pounds, I'm like, eh, time to pump the brakes. I was 195 a couple months back. Now I'm back down 178. I'm trying to shoot for like 160, but I only get skinny so I can just start eating good again. You know what I mean? I did order one of those uh, uh, make it make it yourself, make it at home meal deals. I don't want to say which one it is. There's like three or four different ones. Um, if they want to like sponsor a video or something, definitely. I'd love to do that. Was a, that a segue into another question that am I going to do any more cooking videos? I would love to do those videos, but I feel like that's a lot of free promotion. So I don't know, man. Maybe I'll hit them up soon and see uh, see if we can work something out. Because that is, it's a cheaper alternative one. The food is great. It teaches you how to cook. Um, it's a lot of fun, dude. So I don't know how I got off on talking about that, but told you I like food. Hey, it's Danny said, what has been going on with Optic recently? What are your thoughts? So obviously I'm a little secluded from everything um, that's gone on over the past couple of months. So I don't know. 
a lot of the uh, a lot of the details. But look, this is not like a a new thing. You know what I mean? Whenever you build something up to a certain point. Um, you will sometimes need other people to take over. You need money to scale. And had Optic not taken on an investment, I mean, Optic would have been left behind. You know, there would be no Optic uh, Overwatch team. There would be no Optic League of Legends team. Probably wouldn't be able to fund an Optic uh, Counter-Strike team. And moving forward, looking out over the next like 10 or 15 years, that's probably going to be where the money flows. Like as much as, you know, everyone within Optic, they, they love Call of Duty. And Call of Duty might make a resurgence, you don't know. But I feel like COD's been around so long and, and I don't know if it's the the fact that the game comes out each year or, or what it is that's just sort of, of hurting it. I think people are just tired of it. And I think that because I feel that way. Like I was super stoked for World War II. I seriously was. And then I played the beta, the game came out. I don't think I played a single game. I think I'm a level zero or like a level one on World War II. So I don't, I don't know if it's the game anymore. I don't know if they can make a Call of Duty game good enough to bring people back. But that's to bring me back to my original point, like I think uh, the money is gonna flow towards the more popular PC games. And um, you know, in order to compete, you gotta take on investment. And when that happens, new people come in and you know, a new culture, a business culture tries to sync up with you know the old like family type structure. Like this has happened in business many, many times and there's growing pains, there's communication problems. It's pretty like standard stuff. I mean, nobody's gonna get it right um, the first time. But I think recently things have been uh, working out a little bit better and I think it's starting to pick up some steam. So hopefully I get back down to Texas soon. Um, still working out whether or not I'm going to be moving down there full time uh, later this year. So we'll see what happens with it. Um, I'm kind of hoping that's the case. So we'll see. That's uh, as far as I know what what has been going on with Optic recently. So a little rough transition. Now we're here. Let's do this shit. Matthew Burr said, can I do a good review YouTube series where we watch you eat all the amazing food that you talk about? I would actually love to. Should I do like one of those per week? Instead of doing like the meal, uh, like make it yourself, I could do those as well, but like ordering from places in uh, Chicago, maybe even traveling to other places, I would love that. That'd be my favorite thing to do for sure, is just go rate food and talk about it and eat it on camera. Yeah, fantastic. Let me know in the comments what y'all think about that. I might do that later this week. Myro or Miro, I think it's Myro Hagelberg said, is Chicago your favorite place to live? Would you move somewhere else if you had a chance? I think I'd definitely like to explore other um, cities. I think ultimately I'd like to live in like Miami or something or somewhere in Florida. All I want in life, like just to be happy. I just want not even a big place, just a place near the water with like some, some Florida ceiling windows and uh, like a little boat, like a jet ski or something, just sunny days, fucking good ass like street food, food trucks. I swear to God, I'd be heaven on earth. That'd be heaven on earth. So maybe Miami, I'm thinking about that. Is anybody from Miami? They probably are. Let me know in the comments what y'all think about the place. I don't know where else, Key West is like too close to, um, I don't know, like hurricanes and shit. The reason I like Chicago is because there's no natural disasters, right? Last tornado, long ass time ago, no earthquakes, even though I think we are on a pretty big fault line. Um, yeah, in Miami, I mean, I'd be evacuating every few months and shit, I just, I don't know. But I think I will end up down in uh, down in Florida, maybe Ca California's expensive though. So is Miami probably. Somewhere warm is where I'd ultimately like to be. I just don't know about Texas. Obviously, I may live in Texas for a little bit, but I'm talking about like live, buy a home, um, and establish my place of being. Probably be like in Florida somewhere. Hermson Dan said, what games in the near future are you excited for? My goodness, I've been excited for MLB The Show. I'm having a ton of fun with that. Um, like I said, I'm thinking about playing A Way Out. Uh, which just came out the other day. What else is there? Far Cry 5? I've been trying to get my hands on that shit early, but it comes out on Tuesday, so look out for some Far Cry 5 videos. The Last of Us 2 should be coming out this year. I don't know if Red Dead Redemption 2 got delayed until next year, or did it get delayed until this fall? Um, I don't know, but those are a few. 
uh, big ones. I need to look at the list of like when games are coming out this year because I know there's some I'm, I'm probably missing, but a lot of good games coming out, man. Stay tuned. Rise Jones said, how many hours do you spend trading per week? I think it depends. Like a lot of people think you can trade for income and I'm sure there are like income producing strategies, but trading returns aren't linear. Like you can't quit your job and think like, okay, I need to make $10,000 a month in order to uh, make a living and I'm gonna take that money out and I'm gonna live off of it. Like, depending on your strategy, like for, for my particular way of trading, I, um, I may lose money for, you know, three weeks in a row or three months in a row. And then in two or three days, make it all back and then some. So you really don't know. And depending on like what the market situation looks like, some weeks I'll be very involved if there's a lot of opportunities. If it's, you know, kind of like choppy and I don't like the, the action, then I'll take more time off. So it really just, it all depends on your timing. It, it really is a game of poker. You gotta know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to raise your bet, and know when to walk the fuck away, cause it'll take it back. You can make money keeping it though. Good luck, good luck. All right, final question just came in a few minutes ago from 12 Hawks 12. He said, what are your best and worst days while being a part of Optic Gaming? I mean, look, best days, there's a ton of them, man. There's a lot of good days in the original Optic House, in, uh, in the Scuff House, even before that, like 2011, like flying over to Europe for the first few times and competing over there, even though, shit, I guess we did leave Optic for that. I was always in Optic though, come on. I just, I had to compete. Um, so yeah, like 2011 teaming with like Rambo and Merc and Skump and uh, J-Cap, Proof, you know, those were uh, those were some, some bright days. Now, dark days, I can remember the darkest day was I walked, or no, I was sitting in the living room at 6050 and I was watching something on TV and I saw two rats like peek their heads out from underneath. We had that table underneath the TV in the living room. And you know how normally like mice and, and rats, they, they're kind of scared of you, right? And you know, you hardly ever get to see it. You'll see it like scurrying away. But these motherfuckers were so brave that they just stared me down, both of them. Like they came out from behind, like imagine my hands are mice. Like I was just sitting there watching TV and all I saw was like, they just both peeked out. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? And then we found like six mice in Matt's room, like in a duffel bag. Mike fucking drowned one in the sink. Like those were, wow. Those were dark days, dude. Those were dark days for sure. And we kept like getting third place in tournaments and everybody was roasting us, which looking back, fuck third place. That's not bad. I mean, people say if you ain't first, you're last, but that's a fucking lie. There's second, there's third. Hell, even top five is pretty admirable, I think. So, yeah, a lot of good days. That Those were definitely the worst uh, worst memories I can think of in Optic, though. There weren't a lot of bad ones, man. There, there really weren't. It was a special time in my life, and it continues to be. It's not uh, it's not over. So, thank you guys for tuning in to the Q&A. Like I said, it's been forever um, since I've done one of these, and it, uh, it felt good. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, be on the lookout later today for some more gaming videos going live. I know I got an MLB, I got a Fortnite no kill challenge. Jesus Christ, was that difficult? And um, yeah, I might get a way out up uh, tonight as well. So we'll see what happens once again. Thank you for tuning in. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like if you didn't just refresh it and give it one more chance. And as always, guys, I don't really have an